big scares. Jeffrey Dahmer was born in Milwaukee in 1960. There is not a great body of detailed evidence on what happened to create Jeffrey Dahmer, but it is known that, as a child, he was subjected to his mother and father's blistering arguments. There were also reports that a male neighbor had sexually molested him. Whatever the confluence of forces, by the age of 10, Jeffrey was clearly showing the signs of a future killer. He delighted in violating the bodies of dead animals, such as mounting the head of a dog on a stake decapitating rats and mice, and bleaching chicken bones. By the time Dahmer was in high school, his family had moved to Bath Township, a sleepy suburb of Akron, Ohio. There, Dahmer was an outcast who quickly became an alcoholic. He drank heavily at school, often hiding beer and hard liquor in his army fatigue jacket. To fit in, Dahmer would often pull practical jokes, like pretending to have seizures. He would do this so frequently that pulling off a good practical joke became known around the school as doing a dumber. During this time, Dahmer also realized that he was gay. As his sexuality blossomed, so too did his increasingly abnormal sexual fantasies. Dahmer began fantasizing about raping men and became aroused by the idea of completely dominating and controlling another person. As Dahmer's violent fantasies grew stronger, his control weakened. At the time, Jeffrey Dahmer's parents divorced the same year he graduated high school. His father and brother decided to move into a nearby motel, and Dahmer and his mother continued living at the family home. Whenever Dahmer's mother was out of town, he had full control of the house. Just weeks after he graduated high school, Dahmer committed his first murder. On one such occasion, Dahmer took advantage of his newfound freedom. He picked up 18-year-old hitchhiker Stephen Mark Hicks, who was on his way to a rock concert in nearby Lockwood Corners. Dahmer convinced Hicks to join him at his house for some drinks before he went to the show. After hours of drinking and listening to music, Hicks attempted to leave, a move that enraged Dahmer. In response, Dahmer bludgeoned Hicks from behind with a 10-pound dumbbell and strangled him to death. He then stripped Hicks naked and masturbated on his lifeless corpse. Then, Dahmer brought Hicks down to the crawl space of his house and began dissecting the body. Afterward, Dahmer removed the bones, smashed them to powder, and dissolved the flesh with acid. Then, for a while after this there were apparently no more murders, it was a time when Dahmer enrolled in college, unsuccessfully, and then signed up for a six-year stint in the army. He was discharged after two years for alcoholism. In 1982, Dahmer moved in with his grandmother in West Allis, Wisconsin. In August of that year, he was arrested for exposing himself at a state fair. In September 1986, he was charged again with public exposure after two boys accused him of masturbating in public. This time he was sentenced to a year in prison, and he served ten months. In September 1987, Dahmer escalated back to murder when he killed 25-year-old Stephen Tuomi. Stephen Tuomi disappeared, and people found out he had been murdered by Dahmer only when Dahmer confessed to his crimes in 1991. He killed three more men, and he was also experimenting with his victims, particularly with their body parts. The odor proved too much for his grandmother, who threw him out of her house on September 25, 1988. On same day, September 25, 1988, he was arrested for fondling a 13-year-old Laotian boy in Milwaukee, for which he served 10 months of a one-year sentence in a work release camp. He was required to register as a sex offender. He convinced the judge that he needed therapy, and he was released on good behavior with five-year probation. After that, Dahmer took an apartment on Milwaukee's North 25th Street, and there at least eight killings took place. Dahmer's mo was particularly horrible, he wanted to create zombies that would be at his beck and call, and to do this, he drilled holes in his victims' skulls and poured caustic solutions into the holes to make them unconscious. The method didn't work, though it did succeed in killing the victim every time. Dahmer also began to collect grotesque trophies from his victims. This practice began with the murder of a 24-year-old aspiring model named Anthony Sears. 
Sir struck up a conversation with the seemingly innocent Dom or at a gay bar. After going home with Dahmer, Sears was drugged, raped, and eventually strangled. Dahmer would then preserve Spears' head and genitals in jars filled with acetone. When he moved into his own place downtown, Dahmer brought the dismembered pieces of Sears with him. Over the next two years, Dahmer committed the bulk of his murders. He would lure young men back to his home, often offering them money to pose nude for him before killing them. After taking photos of the corpses and dissolving their flesh in bones, Dahmer would regularly keep the skulls of his victims as trophies. He also began experimenting with various techniques to preserve these grisly mementos. He once even accidentally exploded the head of one of his victims, Edward Smith, when he tried to dry it out in the oven. Around the same time, Dahmer began to dabble in cannibalism. He kept body parts in the refrigerator so that he could feast on them later. In the early morning hours of May 30, 1991, 14-year-old Konarak Sinfasom phoned the younger brother of the boy Dahmer had molested in 1988, was discovered on the street, wandering nude and under the heavy influence of drugs. Dahmer convinced police that they had an argument while drinking, and that Sinfasom phone was his 19-year-old boyfriend. Against the teenager's protests, which the police likely didn't understand, as Synth Asomphone didn't speak English, police turned him over to Dahmer. Later that night, Dahmer killed and dismembered Synth Asomphone, keeping his skull as a souvenir. By the summer of 1991, Dahmer was a murdering approximately one person each week. He killed Matt Turner on June 30, Jeremiah Weinberger on July 5, Oliver Lacey on July 12 and finally Joseph Brandhoft on July 18. On July 22, 1991, Dahmer lured another man, Tracy Edwards, into his home. According to the would-be victim, Dahmer struggled with Edwards to handcuff him. Edwards escaped and flagged down a police car, with the handcuffs still hanging from one hand. Edwards led police back to Dahmer's apartment, where Dahmer at first acted friendly to the officers only to turn on them when he realized that they suspected something was wrong. As one officer subdued Dahmer, the other searched the house and uncovered multiple photographs of murdered victims and human remains, including three severed heads and penises. All told, the police found the remains of eleven people, with parts divided between acid vats and the refrigerator. And it was not that Dahmer wasn't religious. In his bedroom they found an altar festooned with candles and skulls of his victims, as well as photos of people he had killed. Dahmer was arrested, and it didn't take long for him to admit to all of his murders. But despite his unspeakable crimes, Dahmer was found to be sane during his 1992 trial. Dahmer was indicted on 15 murder charges and the trial began on January 30, 1992. Even though the evidence against him was overwhelming, Dahmer pled insanity as his defense due to the nature of his incredibly disturbing and uncontrollable impulses. Following two weeks of trial, the court declared him sane and guilty on 15 counts of murder. He was sentenced to 15 life terms, for a total of 957 years in prison. In May of the same year, he entered a guilty plea for the murder of his first victim, Stephen Hicks and received an additional life sentence. Dahmer served his time at the Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage, Wisconsin. During his time in prison, Dahmer expressed remorse for his actions and wished for his own death. He also read the Bible and declared himself a born-again Christian, ready for his final judgment. He was attacked twice by fellow inmates, with the first attempt to slice his neck open leaving him with only superficial wounds. However, he was attacked a second time on November 28, 1994, by an inmate as they cleaned one of the prison showers. Dahmer was found still alive, but died on the way to the hospital from severe. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.